Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg, here today to do my new weekly tradition of posting a Friday Reads video on a Saturday because I recorded on a Friday and it makes sense to me and it's my channel, I can do what I want. But anyway, uh, it's been a good reading week. I have finished actually three books, which is interesting, but we'll get to that. In other news, you all probably saw that Hamnet won the Women's Prize. I am still excited about that and I'm looking forward to a lot of book awards news coming up. The Booker Prize is going to be announcing its shortlist on this coming Tuesday. I'm looking forward to that. I'm very curious what's going to make the shortlist. It seems like there are a lot of contenders. I'm going to do like a quick prediction and not, not a, like a full shortlist prediction but uh, my own version of it for the, it later on but um, I want to also mention that the National Book Award long list is coming up I think either toward the end of next week or the week after. Can't remember which. And yeah, the Nobel Prize is coming in October, so lots of book award news coming, and I'm really excited about all of that. Getting to the Booker shortlist, I have not still not read a lot of the books, and I think it's difficult to predict what the shortlist is going to be. I know a lot of people are going to be doing that. KD Books is having a contest. He'll shave if he loses his prediction thing. I'll, I'll link his channel down below. Here's what I think. I think Hilary Mantel is going to make the shortlist with the mirror and the light. Will she win? I really don't know. I think Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart is going to make the shortlist. I've seen a lot of really great feedback on that book so far and I'm really excited to read it myself. I have a buddy read of it planned in either October or November. And I think Burnt Sugar might make it. What I've seen of feedback on it so far is really good, but people also, it's funny, the feedback I've seen has all been positive, but all of those people leave room for the book to be unpalatable for other people. So it'll be interesting to see, but the, like I said, all of the feedback I've seen on it so far has been positive, and actually it's really increased my own interest in reading the book. Fortunately, it's not published in the U.S. until next year. So at some point, I'm going to think about ordering a copy from the UK, but not right now. So, but it's on my radar. It's definitely something I want to read. And so I think those three have a really good shot at making the shortlist. Outside of that, I am pulling up the long list right now. It's really hard to tell. I think there are two works of kind of that, that at least flirt with autofiction. And there's Love and Other Thought Experiments by Sophie Ward and the Gabriel Krause book, Who They Was. I, I don't know that both of them will make it. I feel like since there are two, it seems to be something that the jury likes. So I'm, I'm going to say maybe Who They Was by Gabriel Krause will take a spot on the short list. And beyond that... I really don't know. Uh, this Mortable Body, I've heard very mixed things about, but it, it feels like the author Titi Dungaramga could earn a spot just, you know, as, as a show of support for the author. I don't know that Ann Tyler has too much of a shot. I don't know what's going to happen with a Paragon, given the, the... I mean, there have been allegations against Colin McCann, not, nothing really official, just reporting on Twitter backed up by Roxanne Gay. And it's going to be interesting because there also is a bit of an own voices complaint against that book. So it's really going to be interesting because I think if it makes the shortlist, that conversation might amplify. And if it doesn't, it might just quietly recede into the background. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with that book. I'm going to guess it does not make the shortlist. Not just because they want to avoid the controversy, although I think that will be part of it, but I think that there are some other books by more diverse authors that they might want to uh, focus on instead. How Much of These Hills is Gold I think has a lot of potential to make the shortlist, but I think we there's, there's a common theme in here with the Krause book and Kylie Reed and Brandon Taylor, and I think either, I don't think that both Such a Fun Age and Real Life will make the shortlist. I think of the two, Real Life probably has a better shot. So basically, to sum up, I think Ann Tyler is not going to make the shortlist. I would not be surprised if Colin McCann does make the shortlist, but I'm guessing no. If he does, 
I'm going to be curious to see if the controversy around him really amplifies and, and goes up. So I think we have Hilary Mantel, Douglas Stewart, and Avni Doshi. I'm going to say maybe Gabriel Krause, Brandon Tyler, and then the last spot is really going to be a wild card. And I'm just going to throw one out there to, to make it like a full list of predictions of six books. And I'm going to say the last spot will be This Mortable Body by Tsitsi Dungaremga. That's going to be my prediction. So I'd love to hear your prediction, what you think might make it, what you've thought of the books if you've been reading along with them, and what you would like to see and would not like to see make the shortlist. Leave that in the comments down below. I would love to hear that. And let's all stay tuned for Tuesday. That's pretty, that's pretty much all of the book news that's gone on this week. So let's get into the actual Friday Reads portion of this. So like I said, I mentioned I finished three books this week. The first one that I finished was The Bass Rock by E.V. Wilde. I had been reading this on NetGalley. And I did not like it. Here that, Now... It's, it's difficult to talk about because I think Evie Wilde is a great writer. And I think some of the things that I reacted negatively to are the point. I think you are supposed to feel uncomfortable when you read the book. And Evie Wilde did a great job with that. So, so much of what I was going to think about the book depended on the ending. And I think Evie Wilde, being honest, is terrible at endings. It's just how I feel. I remember really liking all the birds singing, but then it, I remember hating the ending. And this kind of fell into the same place where it's like all of these chess pieces are put on the board, they're moved around, but you don't end the game. It feels like the book, I don't want to get into spoilers, but it feels like a lot of plot threads are left completely unresolved. And that is very frustrating. And when you're somebody like me who was not enjoying the book in the first place. It's kind of infuriating. <laughs> so, but the reason I'm kind of loath to talk about it is that I'm going to be thinking about this book a lot. And maybe because I was having negative feelings and feeling uncomfortable, that ends up coloring my impression of the book. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to marinate on the Bass Rock and talk a little bit more about it maybe when I do my monthly wrap-up for September. But my initial reaction was that I hate the book. <laughs> so, But I'm going to think about it, process a little more, and try to see where I come out in the end. Maybe I'll come up with some... You know what I have not done yet is I have not really read a whole lot of reviews of the book. And I know some book two people who uh, have have loved the book, and I I think I should seek them out. It is a very gothic book. It's a very well written book. I just think, and it makes a very interesting point about the violence against women, and how resilient women can be. But I feel like those are there are things in the book that prompt those thoughts, but it ultimately doesn't say anything. And I don't know how I feel about that. So I'm going to seek out like reviews and booktube videos about the book, and we'll we'll see. Because I, I feel like it's it's imp it's important to kind of interrogate like why you have a negative reaction to something, and that's what I'm going to be doing over the rest of September. And it's not going to be fun to do because, like I said, I my initial reaction is just not to like the book at all. So we'll see how that goes. And then I also finished the audiobook I had been listening to last week. I had just started it, The Night Swim by Megan Golden, and it was fine. It was not quite what I expected. So it's about a, and it's one of those books where you kind of have to go with the premise. It's about a podcast host who has a podcast called Guilty or Not Guilty, which is supposed to be sort of like serial. It's a podcast about true crime and that really blew up and caused a lot of imita imitators to come out. But basically, she goes to a town to cover a rape trial. The rape trial, by the way, is almost suspiciously similar to the Brock Turner case. The defendant is a swimmer, really athletic. Everybody talks about his potential, particularly in terms of us being a swimmer. So ostensibly she's going to cover that case. But on her way to the town where the trial is being held, 
she starts getting stalked by somebody who says they had submitted an idea for a story and had been ignored and they really want her to look into the case of uh, a woman who drowned off of the pier in the early 1990s, I believe. And the reason it's one of those premises that you just have to go with is that the pod you are supposed to believe that the podcast host is so intrigued by the backstory that she is presented with that she doesn't mind being stalked by this person. Like, she prizes anonymity. She does not really want to be known. She doesn't want to become a celebrity. And yet, she's ultimately fine with this person leaving notes on her car outside of a restaurant or, like, accessing her hotel room, basically. And you have to believe that she would be so intrigued by the case that she'd be okay with all of that, and it doesn't quite make sense. The book is not really about the mystery so much, which is good because the cast of characters is limited enough that it's kind of easy to zero in on what the answer is going to be, because of course the rape trial that she is covering and the cold case that she is being asked to look into are inevitably going to connect in some way that I will not reveal. But, so it's a it's a fine book. I've struggled really badly with mystery thrillers for a while now. So it didn't irritate me. It didn't, it wasn't bad, but uh, you know, it just kind of is what it is. And I'm sure if you ask me about this book in a year, I probably won't remember it, but it was, it was kind of fun for now. So that's where I end up <laughs> with The Night Swim. It's not, I, I feel like that's not a really great recommendation, but I would say if you're looking for something really quick and easy to listen to or read, you really can't go wrong with it. Um, it's not a great book, but it is a good way to pass the time, and I hope that makes sense. The other book is I finished was the audiobook. I started immediately after finishing The Night Swim, and I we actually ran out and got a physical copy. So here's a spoiler for my book haul for this month. So the answer is Reflections on My Life by Alex Trebek. I had been thinking I was going to kind of skip this book, but my husband listened to it on audio and enjoyed it. And he said it's a really quick listen and I should listen to it. So I did uh, because it was available on Scribd. And then we went and bought a copy of it because Alex Trebek reveals toward the end of the book, because he assumes you've already paid for it, that all of his proceeds from the book will be going to his charitable or organization. So you, so it will do good in the world. And then we both felt bad because we had listened to it through <laughs> a, basically a library lending app and didn't actually pay for it. So we wanted to, you know, throw, throw some money his way so it can go to that charitable organization. And I, I was surprised this is actually a really interesting book. I will say... He had resisted the idea of writing a memoir in the past or an, or an autobiography, and you can tell he's still not really into the idea. It feels very much like he sat down with a ghostwriter and just told them stories and anecdotes about his life, and they collected them into this book. Because basically, the entire book is short little vignettes about him and his life. So, like... Here's the chapter, what is the nickel range? And it's this is where he talks about his parents and how he got his start. It's only like five chapters long. And then you go to what is pollution and then you can see that chapter ends right there. It's just a quick little story, again, about the town. By the way, the print version of the book has really great photos in it, which I would not have known if I hadn't picked it up. But so just a fun thing about that. And yet the audio is narrated by Ken Jennings and Alex Trebek, which is funny because they transition back and forth and they make it kind of like a conversation between the two of them. Like Alex will say, all right, I'm gonna hand narration over to my friend Ken Jennings and then Ken Jennings will narrate for a while because since Alex Trebek is dealing with uh, pancreatic cancer and treatment for it, he I mean, didn't really want to spend the energy doing the whole audiobook. so Ken Jennings does the, the bulk of it. But then when there is a chapter on, say, him meeting his wife, he'll, he'll kind of jump in and say, I'm going to interrupt you here, Ken, and I'll, I'll take the narration on the next one. <laughs> Which, it's kind of like fun banter between the two of them. And he tells a couple of stories about Jeopardy and his favorite contestants and things like that. And it ends up being a really interesting... So it's not your traditional memoir. If you're looking for a traditional memoir, you won't find that here. 
it was, it's not great literature either. Like I said, it's clear that he's kind of just telling anecdotes about his life and that's, that, that's all it is. But he also makes really good points about life and death and acceptance and him facing down what is likely a terminal di cancer diagnosis and his intentions in dealing with that and his family and it's actually very emotional in that regard and I had not expected that and I, so I ended up enjoying the book I, I, and I do recommend it. it especially if you're looking for like a really quick listen or a really quick read this is probably something you could curl up on the couch with for an afternoon and be done with will it be one of my favorite books for the year no but it is something I'm definitely going to remember unlike maybe the night swim and I feel like I feel like I keep throwing shade at the night swim but <laughs> But I ended up really enjoying this, which I did not expect, and I uh, am glad that I listened to my husband and listened to the audiobook. And I'm glad that we went out and bought a copy of the book to support his charitable organization. So those are the books that I finished. There were no DNFs this week. I am currently in the middle of two books. First one is Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This is the buddy read I am doing with Courtney Ferreter. I will link her channel down below. We are 50 pages in at this point, and I need to read another 50 pages to uh, or roughly 50 pages in the next part for our check in on Sunday, and I haven't gotten into that yet. So I am enjoying the book so far. I think it's very interesting the way the book starts because I knew the basic premise of the book, which is that Florentino and Fermina are. Love, have this passionate love affair, but she ends up marrying someone else. So I was expecting it to start with them, and it does not. The first chapter actually starts with Fermina's husband when they are both old. And it's a really interesting way of starting the book because usually in a romantic triangle, the third person or the odd person out is treated like they don't quite matter, but it feels like by introducing you to the book through him, you really make that relationship have, have a foundation. And it's going to be very interesting to see how it moves into the story of Florentino and Fermina from there. And that's all I'm going to say about this so far. But I'm really intrigued and enjoying it so far. The other book I am currently reading is Transcendent Kingdom by Yagyasi. I do not have the dust jacket on because I'm currently reading it and I don't leave the dust jacket on hardcover books while I am reading them because I am not a barbarian. Sorry to anybody who does. I'm mostly kidding. But anyway, we are about 66 pages in this. I'm doing a buddy read uh, uh, with Erica from The Broken Spine. I will link her channel down below and having a really great discussion about this so far because even though we're only 66 pages in, it feels like there's a lot to talk about. And yet, it's really easy to read. I, we, we had agreed to uh, check in at quarter sections of the book, so I could have easily kept going. And I read that those 66 pages very quickly. And I had gotten this book on NetGalley, but then I, uh, it was one of the book of the month selections, so I grabbed it so I would have a copy. So, um, it, it, so I'm reading it two ways. <laughs> but it, there's just a lot to talk about, and it's easy to read. I think, I, I don't like the phrase commercial fiction because I feel like it denigrates reading uh, any type of writing that might be appealing to a large amount of people, but it feels like this is a book that really straddles the line between commercial fiction and literary fiction, and I hate the little term literary fiction as well because it sounds elitist and like like this literature is more serious and therefore should be taken more seriously, And but I, I don't want to get into that whole conversation. But anyway, I'm really enjoying this so far. I think it could easily end up being one of my favorite reads of the year, possibly Love in the Time of Cholera as well. And it's funny to be reading two books that you're really enjoying at the same time. So I'm very much looking forward to getting further into Transcendent Kingdom and Love in the Time of Cholera. Those are the only two books I am currently reading. I finished, and the, anth the answer is on audio yesterday, and I have not started another audiobook. I actually took a break today to do some catching up on podcasts, which was nice. I listened to two episodes of The Daily Show this morning. I listened to the podcast. I don't actually watch it, but that's just me being weird. So I've just been catching up on some podcasts, and I am going to think about what audio I will start next, because I don't have one available on Libby right now, and I, I, I have options. But right now, I'm kind of enjoying catching up on podcasts and not having like a a more heavy storyline to follow. Uh, it's good to give yourself a little bit of a break like that. So, so anyway, 
That is what I've been reading this week. I'd love to hear what you've been reading, what you've been loving, what you've been DNFing. If you want to yell at me about the Bass Rock, go ahead. <laughs> People have done worse. And I, so if you, thoughts on what you've been reading or anything like that, leave them in the comment section down below. I did not get to another 3K Q&A video this week. I'm going to do my best to get one next week and continue with that. So if you've made it this far, thank you for that. As always, I really do appreciate your time, and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.